The Nigeria Governors Forum has stated that General Ibrahim Babangida and his achievements have remained a reference point to younger generations. They said uh, this while visiting the former military president to felicitate with him on his 80th birthday. They stated that he deserved accolades considering how much he contributed to the de development of the country by fighting for the unity of the nation as a soldier and a military president. Well, joining us to discuss this is Chris Mwokobia, a legal practitioner, and Biodum Shomi, a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Mwokobia. Um, the, the choice of words um, by the, these um, governors is very intriguing. When they say that um, the former um, military leader had um, somewhat um, become a reference point to younger generations. I'm wondering, is this in a good way or in a positive way? And, and, and the former president, uh, it seems to be in the news a lot these days. I understand that uh, it is uh, the week of his 80th birthday. I understand that he has uh, granted a few interviews recently. But what I don't understand is the accolades that uh, um, he's been getting lately. What I don't understand is what uh, has suddenly changed about the persona of our former president, the, the first uh, uh, military president we've had in this country. What I don't understand is um, why the governors are dancing to the hilltop and telling us fantastic stories about what is not. Uh, what I don't understand is um, the, the, the level of free singing that he's getting uh, presently. The only thing I align with in the interviews he's granted recently is the fact that uh, he has said clearly that the time for young people to take over the realms of leadership is now. The time for young people to organize and redeem our countries now. To that extent, I will agree with uh, Babangida, but beyond that, uh, I don't understand what uh, uh, the reference points uh, to younger generation would be. Uh, we're still, uh, we're yet to recover from what happened in 1993 as a nation. We're yet to remedy completely the, the ills of uh, that annulment. We're yet to walk away from uh, the problems that uh, uh, otherwise that process, that June 12 election would have solved. You know, I remember that in June 12, we had a Muslim Muslim ticket, which obviously what it did was to say to Nigerians that though tongues and tribes may differ, though your creed and clan may differ, Nigerians can truly work in brotherhood. But unfortunately, throwing away that ticket via the annulment of that election was a major sour point in all that IBB stands for. But I want to say that um, no matter how much politicians and politicians attempt to rewrite history, history will stand tall. And that is why some of us are very concerned about uh, about the pre-singing of IBB, the pre-singing of the Maradona, the pre-singing of the, the man the, the media called the evil genius. Mm -hmm. I, I think what we must note here is, and I say without fear of querulous critics and without a convocation, that the time to call a spade by its name is now. Uh, maybe he wants a good closure to his uh, sojourn in this space. But that's, that, that he can do uh, differently. Okay. I, I disagree with politicians singing his praise. Okay. I, I think that the time has come, and we truly understand that it is you to clock. It is time to redeem our country, and young people can do that. Okay. IBB does not necessarily have to give us a lecture in that. You, you, you actually played into my point, but let me go to um, Mr. Shomi. I, I was going to ask the question about IBB being uh, in the news lately, the fact that politicians are paying homage to him and speaking glowingly about him. And, and Mr. Mokobia has actually played into that. And I'm, I'm wondering, is he trying to rewrite history? Is he 
what, what do you think is at play here? Uh, and let's not forget, 2023 is around the corner, and he seemed to have, in one of his interviews, um, given somewhat of a, a, a list of the kind of uh, politician or leader that the, the country deserves. And when he plays the card of, uh, you know, young people, it's time for young people to be in power, that's not new. Young people have heard this story over and over again. I heard it when I was a child that I was the leader of tomorrow. Tomorrow has come and gone. I'm still not yet a leader, per se, in that sense. So really, what do you think is at play um, in terms of the former military general? Well, it's interesting that um, we seem to have forgotten um, Nigerians have very short memory. Uh, I'm not surprised politicians are Person, president, uh, former President Brian Bangida. Um, not forget, just like uh, uh, Chris said, um, his role. Uh, one major thing which I know he would always be a reference point for is that he annulled the most free, fair election in the history of Nigeria. Whether that is something to be praised for or not, I don't know. Um, you can make up your mind on that. He, for the first time, when sanctions were imposed on Nigeria, Nigeria became a pariah state, was under Ibrahim Babangida, who are not the election that led to Abacha coming into power. And uh, Nigeria became, you know, a pariah state. He did set the actions, you know, the ball rolling, you know, the actions in motion that led to that. And we should never, never forget that he was actually humbled out of power. He was forced out of power. Um, I doubt whether there's much to remember that. Um, when we started talking about huge, you know, among God's amount of money uh, suspected to be looted, uh, you would never forget um, to mention Ibrahim Babangida. So when governors, many of who people have their viewpoints on um, what they are worth uh, in terms of uh, uh, their own access to public wealth, you know, start pressing IBB, then you begin to ask yourself, uh, they say birds of the same feathers flow together. And uh, for me, it's quite clear that is it that they're looking for a dust for my BB because of the uh, 2023 elections, the upcoming presidential elections. If it's not about that, then it's actually because uh, they, they are, they, well, they know what IBB did when it was in power, but they didn't see anything wrong with it. They probably would have done the same thing if they had been in um, IBB's shoes. So therefore, the electorate needs to look at these um, politicians very well, governors very well, and know the stuff they are made of. So the, that's the major thing. When you look at IBB's policies, uh, which he initiated at that time, it was rejected by Nigerians. You will not forget uh, Professor Sam Kuki, you know, headed the Kuki Commission that came out with a report rejecting commercialization of the commanding lights of the economy, you know, uh, nationalization of this, um, 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 privatization of the oil industry and all that. So those are the commanding heights. His own flagship policies were rejected, economic policies rejected by Nigerians, you know, before we eventually got rid of him from power. So I'm beginning to ask myself, what are the issues that they want us to remind, uh, to remember about that, you know, the good, those good things they see uh, because the man drove us almost to the point of collapse, almost to the point of civil war. Um, the country was badly divided uh, due to the annulment of June 12, you know, and the crisis went on for so long. Nigeria lost a lot of resources, a lot of sanctions. So I don't know what those governors are thinking about or those politicians. Um, maybe they are different from what we are seeing. Okay, let me go back to Mr. Mokobia. It's very interesting um, to see, again, uh, the accolades that has been given uh, to the former president. Uh, they, they even talked about the fact that um, he fought for the country's unity. Now, Nigeria is, is again at a point where we're having um, insecurity, um, you know, throw up non-state actors. And when, when I talk about non-state actors, we have the likes of Igboho, we have the likes of um, Namdi Kanu, we're seeing a lot of agitations from the north, from the south, from the east. Um, and then we seem to see everybody flocking to a man that many people frowned at. In fact, like you said in your words, an evil genius. But 
people have also, pundits have also blamed the media for giving um, some form of um, um, opportunity for these people to be seen, to be heard. The fact that we keep going to these people and asking them questions and letting them speak on issues uh, about democracy when these people were military leaders, when these people were seen to be dictators. Um, can we also share in the fault as a people for continuously giving an ear to people that we should, probably shouldn't be listening to in terms of growing our nation, especially if, uh, as we are um, on, operating under a democracy? Let me say very clearly that um, to go to anybody to seek counsel or advice uh, perhaps may not be anathema. What I totally disagree. Mr. Walker, can you hear me? Agree with is uh, coming out of such. Can you hear us? <coughs> Go ahead. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, what I disagree with completely is telling us how wonderful and how awesome those who otherwise uh, brought us to the sorry past that we experience today are. <clears throat> I, I completely agree with those who have said that, oh, this modern day, this newfound love for IBB is somewhat reprehensible. I agree with those who are saying that you cannot paint him with beautiful brush when he messed up our democracy. I agree with those who have said that we can do things better. The only thing, like I noted in my opening remark, is that he perhaps may have maradonically uh, admitted that the time has come for a new dispensation of leaders, a new crop of leaders to emerge on our political amphitheater. He has perhaps also carefully uh, admitted that his generation has failed us uh, to 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 celebrate him. But the question uh, is, will yeah. they step aside and let this uh, said generation take their, their 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 position? Will I mean because I mean and, and I'm not also advocating that power just be handed to young people because of course that's uh, some form of godfatherism. But I'm saying no, the system has yeah. one way or the other um, been built to lock young people out. There is some form of systemic. Um, put together a makeup that locks young people out. And, and yeah. really, how easy is that going to be? Young people are not just going to jump into let, the political scene without growing through the ranks. Let me say clearly that in your first segment, you did speak to a young man who's a commissioner in the state of Kogi. Kogi. Yeah. And Kogi State is a state that I am passionate about because... Um, there you have the youngest governor in our country today. And like you noted, and you saw the report, Lokoja is one of the fastest growing cities in Africa. Uh, I, I think that young people are beginning to rise up. I know that young people are beginning to ask strong questions. Uh, in, in 2011, when I was 40, I began this movement for a new dispensation in leadership. I was the youngest presidential candidate in this country uh, in 2011. At 40, I ran for the high office of president. And that was where this call for not too young to run began. Uh, today, there's a bill. Today, the constitutional margin for presidency has been reduced from 40 to 35 uh, young people are beginning to ask strong questions. In the last election, we had 40% uh, of the presidential candidates that we had were less than, than, than 55. I think that consistently, if, we, they, if they continue to ask strong questions and angle and fight for leadership, we can get it. Power is never given. Power is taken. I, I, I agree that uh, over the years, we have had successive leaders who consistently and continuously uh, replicate themselves on the political stage. They, they have consistently stolen so much, mm -hmm. so they have mm -hmm. enough money to dominate our political amphitheater. But whether we like it or not, a highly progressive world is asking strong questions. And okay. that is why consistently we agree. 
that the time is for the youth to take over the realms of leadership. Okay. And it is youth of love. All right, um, Mr. Shomi, you, uh, the last question is for you. Um, you mentioned something earlier on that we need to watch out for these politicians. Um, and, of course, 2023 is in the radar. 2022 is, of course, campaign season, and it will soon be upon us. What should the average um, electorate be armed with as we get ready for campaign season? Well, <clears throat> firstly, we are faced with a major security challenge, which we are all praying will be resolved soon in the country. Because when you look at the nature of it, it's so protracted, you know, on one hand, um, it could uh, prove to be a essential threat you know, to the nation. While on the other hand, um, it's about ordinary criminality, or crime waves going up, you know, in the country, people feeling unsafe and all that. So on both scores, we hope um, the same politicians will have succeeded in resolving many of these issues before the next election. But importantly, what we need to look at is um, the electorate is more about people's ability you know, to um, deliver on their promises rather than uh, being taken for granted. We need to consider you know, merit. We need to consider... Um, issues very important to people, a sense of belonging. It's also very important. Then the programs of the political party, which they intend, you know, to uh, implement, particularly with growing poverty in the country and standard of living is reducing day by day due to um, government um, increasing taxes uh, on goods and services and um, labor wages uh, remaining stagnant. So people need to look at all these issues and ask the governors or the politicians or presidential candidates, look, what's your policy on health, on education, on environment, on housing for the poor? You know, these are uh, germane issues that we must always ask our politicians rather than depending on the, on the little handouts they will give out during the campaign. We okay. shouldn't be rejecting the while asking them um, questions, you know, rather than um, supporting them or supporting political parties simply because of gratifications. Well, as we get ready for 2023 and the year before it, well, all fingers will be crossed and we're hoping that, like you said, the right questions will be asked. Piotr Shoumi is a political analyst. Uh, Chris Mwokobia is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll be back tomorrow, Friday, and we will be bringing you the roundup for this week. I am Mary Anna Cohn. See you tomorrow.